Sunday, my pronouns are they them and welcome to today's video. I'm going to start off with a short unboxing. I recently invested in a new table easel and I am very excited. This purchase was largely driven by my desire to paint larger works on paper and my need to improve my posture and preserve the health of my back, neck, and hands because even though it's hard to admit, I am in fact getting older. To break this easel in, I started off with a few drawings and colored pencil. The week before, I'd taken new headshots and also a bunch of silly photos and I thought those could be fun to draw. And they actually inspired the painting that I finished later on in the video. I really enjoy sketching with colored pencil on copy paper, which is what I'm doing now. It's a very low stakes way for me to practice sketching and if I don't like the drawings, I can just toss them in the recycling. I'm not really one for sketchbooks, especially when I'm in the studio. I like drawing on really smooth hot press papers and I just haven't found a sketchbook that I like or that suits me yet. And until that happens, it will be colored pencil on copy paper. Transitioning to a new easel definitely did have its challenges. I have used my standing easel for larger works in acrylic and oils, but it's very cumbersome and a little awkward. And unfortunately, that has deterred me from creating larger works in the past few years. In recent years, I've primarily been creating small works and working digitally, and I'm hoping that since this easel is so much bigger than I expected, it will encourage me to create larger works. So far, I'm really enjoying the table easel. It was a little tricky trying to figure out what worked best for me in terms of adjusting the height, but working upright is so nice. It's really just a testament to how having access to the right tools for you can really be a game changer in your creative practice.
So a bit about the painting. I'm working with gouache, which is my current go-to medium. I'm not sure about the paper, but I'm pretty confident in saying that it's fluid 100-300 GSM watercolor paper. And it's an offcut from a larger sheet of paper that I found in my watercolor paper stash. As usual, I started off with a pink underpainting. I used more of a cool magenta that I wasn't really happy about, but this was a study and I wasn't really feeling too precious about it. I didn't even bother to tape down all of the sides properly because I wanted the border to be really organic. I started off with my darkest darks and the shadows of the hair. I used a mix of dioxazine violet and dark green. I originally planned for these pinks and purples to just peek through and do another layer of darks on top of the pinks, but I was really liking the way that it was looking, so I just decided to go with the flow and see where it took me. It's been a while since I've painted a self-portrait and this might actually be my first one of the year and it's the end of September. I use myself as a reference in a lot of my work and even though the figures may resemble me, they aren't always technically meant to be me. I found my artistic voice with self-portraits. When I was an undergrad for my drawing one course, the final was a 40 by 50 full body self-portrait done in charcoal and graphite. And that was the beginning of what I like to call my self-portrait period. In drawing two and three, I focused a lot on capturing myself as well. I really liked learning how to take reference photos of myself and do the lighting and posing in my dorm room. And really just learning my face and my body through my work. There was this element of personality and spirit within my work that I had never experienced before and I was chasing it. My capstone course also focused on self-portraiture, but I focused a lot more on painting and getting experimental because by this point I was doing these large, tedious academic drawings that easily took 60 to 80 hours of work. My professor wasn't really happy that I deviated so far from my original proposal, but as I always say, my work is for myself before it's for anyone else. Self-portraits were also a way for me to interrogate my relationships with self-image and self-esteem. Like, if I as an artist make beautiful things and I paint myself, does that make me beautiful? Yes? Maybe? It's complicated. This particular photo that I'm using came from a session where I took new headshots for a project that I finished in August. I talked a bit about it in the beginning of the video and I also wrote a blog post about it and there's a little card that's going to come up. I was feeling really stiff when I took the photos and I was doing silly faces at the camera to test the lighting and to loosen up a little bit. And all of the drawings that I did in the earlier part of the video also came from that session as well. Last year, I participated in a daily painting challenge called Gouache-tober and focused on portraiture and did several painting studies of myself then. I would like to do another 30-day portrait painting challenge, but that'll probably happen in the new year. And I think I will be more of a creative spectator for all of the drawing challenges happening in October. There are so many things that I love about this piece. I love the way that the hair came out, and honestly, I wished my hair looked this cool. I also really love the sassy expression. Many of my friends would say that I make this face all of the time. And what I love most is how high chroma these colors are. The camera does exaggerate the colors a little, and it was a bit of a pain to edit the scan to look like the original. There are some parts of me that wish that I'd integrated more pink into the skin, but I love this painting so much. I know I say that about nearly every painting that I do, 
and that's okay because I love them all. I'm very excited about the place my work is headed and I hope to continue to have you along for the ride. Thank you all so much for watching and listening to me ramble and I will see you in the next one. Bye!